Welcome to Futsar TV, where we aim to bring you the best and the worst in the week in Futsar Ireland. Brought to you with our sponsors, Rudolph McKay Bookmakers and Eurike, made from the very best in German urine. Welcome back to week two of the new season of Futsar TV. We've got sponsorship agreements in place with Yorick and a number of others, which I'll let uh, Cormac talk to you about in a minute. Yep. We've picked off the taxmen, kind of, at least we've got an agreement in place. Uh, so, anyway. And um, we're actually working on being drunk for this one. We're on the way. You know, we're a bit, you know, bit kind of tipsy at the moment. And I bet you could be amazed, actually, that uh, we actually could be bothered to do this one. Two weeks in a row. Yeah, I know. It's and we're early in the week as well. I mean, it's what, it's Tuesday now? Yeah, no, it's, it's actually not Saturday afternoon like normal. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine we'll have this up before the games this week. But uh, anyway, so this last week was uh, plagued by the new match engine. Lots of people unhappy with how it, how it turned out. And uh, this week is probably more the same, really. I hate the new match engine. I know you hate it. Rudolf McCabe hates it, but Rudolf McCabe bookmakers probably love it. Rudolf McCabe bookmakers are very pleased with the results of the new match engine. <laughs> So moving on to our first game of the show, we bring you Kinsale against Leinster. Kinsale last week had a great 5-0 win against Young Munster, and Leinster lost 3-1 at Wanderers. Due to accusations of bias from Dara Priest, our commentator for this match will be Rudolph McCabe, once he gets back from the bathroom. Good ball in towards Champanary. He's got a lot of room to move in towards. A couple of Leinster players following him. This is the feature of the game so far, actually. Yeah, he's had a lot of space so far. Champ out to cross the ball in. The wind carries it back. Finrose wants him to the chip. Evans shoots! Comfortable save for Smith in the end. Matty Garvey here now, towards Hamburger, chests it back to Hunter, Hunter has time, quick ball in towards Hamburger, sees the keeper of his line, good technique but judge the distance poorly. Garvey with the ball, knocked off uh, Trout, Sankshire has time to play back to the keeper, what the hell is he doing, Finn the shot, Smith saves it near post and Sankshire has time to clear. Still it all here in the second half, Josh Gage crosses the ball in towards the box, it's not a great ball but it's cleared, only as far as small, in towards Anderson, to Kennedy, Kennedy shoots, it's a very good save from Smith. Kennedy looking a little bit darker than usual there, isn't he? A lot of time in the tanning salon lately. Rudolph. Looking forced around the ball here. Plays it forward, but Comic Ireland takes it. Take off his toes by Garvey. Garvey's a diagonal ball to Hamburger. Must score! Saved by Powell's feet in the end. A good save. It's cleared by the goalkeeper. Up as far as half mile in the halfway line. He's got Michelangelo outside him. The young lad doing well. Considering it's just a high pressure game. He's got time. He's got one player in the box and about four defenders. In towards McNamara. Turn, shoot. Comfortable save for McPowell in the end, but a good ball. So nil all there. And what was a relatively entertaining game between Kinsale and Leinster. Now, the other team would be too disappointed if we got in the draw. Because, you know, they're both uh, contenders for the title. But at the same time, neither would be too happy. A game, maybe a win there would have really given an edge over the, the competitors. Uh, Cormac, what did, you, what did you think after that game? Well, I thought the referee was atrocious in that game. I thought we should have had at least one penalty. I thought Leinster were very, very poor today. Tommy Jones especially was awful. He let Champ go so many times during the half. We should have destroyed them in the first half and I thought we should have won that game about 10-0. No, no. Take that back. You can't be saying that on the air. 9-0. I'm going to have to ask you to apologise, referee. You're gonna, you can't be saying that in the air. I'm going to have to ask you to apologise. The referee did not have his best game. That's a bit more like it. Is that an apology? That'll do. And now for a massive Cork derby. We have the resurgent Wandering Hoolings taking on Munster. These teams, of course, won the only silverware available in Ireland last season, so this is, could even be regarded as a sort of charity shield type thing, except this is in the league, and this really counts. Both teams will be eager to get points on board ahead of the ITCs. The ball is cleared from the Munster defence for Connor Scott to chase onto. He runs clear of the last defender. He's looking to cut back into the box there, and gets past Williams, gets past Reed, takes a shot. Oh, great save by Owen Pierce at the near post. And there's the ball in from the wing. It finds Bastic in loads of space. He passes it through to Hoof. And good save by Kosinova. Max Gonzo lining up the free kick here. What a strike! Kosinova can get nowhere near it. How did that not go in? Zena and Matthews taking the short throw in. Zena plays in Matthews again. Confusing the Hoops defence completely. What a through ball to Beardsley. He chips it up and there's Scott. Heads it. Nearly over Pierce's head but great save in the end. Here's Bastic on the ball. Looks to pick out a pass. What a ball through there to Gonzo. Goes to the top corner, but just slightly over. Another short throw by Munster. Scott plays it deep, looking for McCabe. First time pass, and there's Beersley. Tries to place it in the bottom corner, but just can't get enough power on it. So the game finished. Nil-nil. Rudolph, were you happy with that result? I can't be happy with that. I mean, 
our lads put everything you know we've planned all week we put a lot of work in there we've got, every, got out there to entertain the fans try and get three points and really attack the game but this, this so called football side the, 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 the enemies of, of 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 attractive football, uh, as it were, are going out there. They're sticking a bus. But, but no, is that fair? Is that fair? Is that fair? Stick, the stick, hooligans stick have been as long in, a bus, in Ireland stick as in a bus, Sticking a bus, sticking, sticking a bus in front of the goal and just humping the ball towards our goal. But you think they'd know better now after winning a cup last season? You, th- that's how they won the cup. That's how they knocked us out. They just they just parked their bus and they think everyone's not going to be prepared for it. And it, and it's fine. They might get results in the short term, but in the long term, they're driving people away from the game. They're driving people away, and it's not on, and I personally will not stand for it. Unfortunately, Killian couldn't join us for live comment, but uh, he, he did leave us a statement. We were hit with a big setback before the game when Gavi Hansen injured himself after slipping on one of his empty pre-match foster cans. The finishing and tackling was a big loss to our side. The industry handed Saba Bastic his first start. The game itself was an even enough match, and we felt that we managed to handle their strike force quite well. Keeping Scott O quiet is something that my defenders could be proud of. Williams, Reed, and Tamarong all played magnificently, and I'm very pleased with that. One of the things I'm not happy about, though, is our shooting. We look shot shy and timid. We need strikers who will have a go, and I hope our lads can step up and pull the trigger more often. At the other end, Owen Fierce was once again the hero, saving ten shots. Surely the Irish number one jersey is his and his alone. On now to match day four of the Youth League. There was a 50% increase on goals scored this week at least, which is, well, something, even if it was only one extra goal. But here are those goals. Kinsale here attacking down the left wing with Edo Burgens. Looks to cut it back into the box. It is blocked by the YFU defender. Burgens picks it up again though. A storming run down the left before crossing in a great ball into the box. William Crow would have been proud of that. For Craig Blaine to score his first goal for Kinsale. The ball was cleared by the Munster defence, but picked up in midfield by a craggy player, who passed it to Dylan Irving. His strong run through the middle beat all the defenders, and then a fine finish to, to smack it past the Munster keeper. 1-0 to Craggy. Munster's Niall Harkness with the ball down the wing. Connor White runs onto it, pulls it back into the box, and there's Paul Vaughan, standing unmarked, scuffs it into the bottom corner. 1-1. There were plenty of goals scored in the B-Leagues this week. In B1, Ackington Cranley got past Port Leash United with a bang, or rather six bangs, from Magnus Bang. But your face on tried hosted Kilkenny Sports and beat them 11-0 with six goals from Ryan Hendricks. That put them top of B1 by one goal difference. In B2, Patrice Matuidi scored nine times for Ironman as they won 12-0 at home to draw the Orient. They're well top and Leinster Academy are pretty much bought now. Unfortunately, David Bryant is nowhere to be seen. Next up we have Young Munster and YFU. Uh, both teams got off to a less than ideal start last week. YFU was a nil-all draw in a game they would have expected to win against Rugged Island. Well, Young Munster didn't probably expect to get a result against Kinsale, but a 5 loss is never pleasing. We'll take it now to our commentator, uh, Cormac Ireland. YFU with the ball, long pass down the wing, to no one in particular. And there's Lanchas running onto it. He looks up, crosses into the box, and there's Thomas Stewart ghosting into the back post. Great goal. Young Munster searching for an equaliser here. Grundy with a strong run into the box. Passes it back. And there's Knapp. Taken out of it by Calhoun. Dirty challenge. Knapp steps up to take penalty. But Dryden Hughes with a casual save to the bottom corner. There's Cassia in his own half. Plays the ball into midfield. Out to Danny Gray. Gray runs down the wing. Jinx past the defender. Looks to play it into the box. Into Kyle Andrews. Lays off. And there's Cassia. Made up some ground there. 2-0. Danny Gray standing up with a free kick here. Plays it into the box. It's cleared. Off Calhoun's face. There's Scuzzy Bucket. Plays it into the box. Andrews again. And Lanchas. Taps it into the corner. Nice play by YFU. Ball towards the box. Hankoop there to clear. Pumps it straight out the field. Route 1 here from YFU. Trump should get there first. But no, he's beaten there by Lanchas. And it's through on goal. Surely not. And 4 0 to YFU. And so that game finished out 4 0 to YFU. YFU, of course, came back on track after not a great start last week. Josh was unwilling to speak to us. Uh, of course, he's in the middle of a, a self-imposed media ban after last week's. Would you call it a rant? Uh, possibly. It was. It was definitely rant-alike. It, it was. It was very balanced <laughs> from him last week. And no, he definitely lost his marbles. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just comment for Josh. I I think YFU. They're a very predictable and efficient side. Exactly. They don't look pretty, but they get the job done. I mean, they, they, they really do indulge in the long ball over the top to get the goal. But, but you can see that at the last goal the, there. The I last mean, goal was a typical YFU goal. Very effective. Counter-attack. Efficient. Direct. 
Yes, long ball. Would, long, no, long I would say long, long ball. Passing. Yeah, I would say they were hoofing it or, or you know. But I mean, like I would, surely, say, I would say it was anti football. They like probably that. won't get relegated this season. Probably not. I'd yeah. say they just about managed playoffs. Yeah, yeah. So on to our final game of the day, and it's the eagerly anticipated clash between Craggy Island and Rugged Island. Rudolph, don't you think that's a bit stupid? Like, you know, Craggy are guaranteed win there. There's nothing at all stupid about the annual All Priests Five Aside Over 75 Indoor Football Challenge match. Isn't there normally a forfeit in these sort of games? Well, last year the losing manager had to photocopy his bottom. He'll never be allowed back into that library again, I tell you. Now we'll take you to our commentators, Rudolph McCabe and Cormac Ireland. Rugged Island on the attack here. Tempest gets the ball, but Fresneda gets it and clears it all the way down towards the corner flag. But wait, where's the corner flag gone? Lamasari doesn't care where the corner flag's gone and runs towards the box. But he's taken down. It looked like a dive to me. Typical Italian. Baragu steps up, scores the penalty. 1-0 to Craggy. It's a corner to Rugged, but the corner flag's gone again. In towards Rupel. Deflected off somebody. Gilblom. 2-0. Wait, wrong score. 1-1. One, one. There we go. Victor Pelk was in the ball. He clears up the field towards Gel Delete. He's able to outpace Matty Hayes, though. Go on, my son. Gel Delete has time to cross the ball in towards the box. Towards a player whose name I'm not going to try and pronounce. And it's 2 1 Craggy Island. Per Gilblom here with the free kick. Rolled into Tina Rupel. Takes a shot. And there's Alessandro. Alessandro reminds me of that guy who was so good at fashion they had to shoot him. Rugged on. Play the ball forward now to Alessandro. But there's Peltman's with the clearance. I'm sure he scored for Munster last week. Gel Delete chasing hard. Gets past the defender, crosses it into the box, and there's Lamasari. Cool finish into the corner. Good goal. Didn't he have a trial for Kinsale? No, he was on trial in Kinsale. Ball cleared up as far as Gilblom. Loses out though. Gel the lead. He's been inspirational so far. On the first night, he's clearing the box. He surely must shoot. Lays it off though, and Lamasari makes it 4 2. Tina Rupo gets the ball, plays it into Walensky. He plays it through to D'Alessandro. Surely they can't make it 4 3 here, can they? But they do. Rugged Ireland back in this game. Does Rupel have a girl's name? Rugged Island pressing hard here for an equaliser. Walensky gets the ball, runs into the area. Surely he must shoot, but no, he's taken off his toe. Pass forward and Lamasari's clear through on goal. Open goal. If Rugged don't do something soon, he's going to score within a matter of minutes. Oh, wait. He scored. 5-3. <laughs> so, for all the talk about the new match engine not producing any goals in games, well, that one certainly proved it wrong. Eight goals in one game. And it's such a, a highly intense rivalry as well between two teams. And of course, Rugged have set themselves up for the season. They've, they've gotten a point off way a few and shown themselves now. They, two they games. came very close to actually equalising in that game and perhaps going on to win it. Certainly, and, and they'll be very proud of themselves like that. So anyway, before the game, there was talk of a forfeit for the losing manager. Do you know anything about that? I'm not sure, but there was some mention of a remote-controlled wheelchair, some fake arms, and now all I know is that Ben Varvel has to kick Tommy Jones up the arse. Next up, then, we have the ITCs coming up. And the four Irish clubs are looking for their their first massive test in international competition. First up, we have Munster looking for a smooth entry into the Champions League with Petroleum KY. Well, the Belarusian side, there, there are no pushovers, but we'll be confident going into this game. And, and then we have the, the Cup Winners' Cup, where the Wanderers are taking on the Georgian Sharks. There'll certainly be a bite in their attack. Then, in the same group, actually, we, in the Continental Cup, we have Kinsale and Leinster. Kinsale are taking on AC Virtus Barry. How are you feeling about that game? We'll have to watch out for the diving. And finally, of course, uh, Leinster are playing United Rivals of Bulgaria. Bit of an oxymoron there, Rudolph. We apologise for the poor quality of this episode. If you'd like to do better, please contact us and give us any submissions you might have. Until next week, goodbye. <laughs>